So the constant challenge with imaging radar is that the wavelengths are many orders of magnitude larger than the wavelengths that we're used to in the optical and near-infrared type of remote sensing. Because our wavelengths are on the scale of centimetres to metres, we need a proportionally larger system in order to be able to get the same level of detail on the Earth's surface. Now, much like our eyes and our ears are very different at their ability to determine direction, so our eyes, because it's work, they're working in only a few hundred nanometer wavelengths, we can get really, really fine detail with our eyes. But our ears are working in wavelengths that are centimetres to metres, and therefore are not very good at doing direction. And radar systems are very similar to that. Now, one of the ways that we overcome that is by looking obliquely. So instead of looking straight down, the radar system looks off to one side. And that means that we can use the really good timing ability of radar to determine roughly the distance of the signal along the ground because it's in proportion to the time delay of the echoes coming back. And so in that way we get over the fact that the directional ability of the radar system is very poor. In the azimuth direction, we have to think of something else, because in the azimuth direction, if we wanted to get a level of detail similar to, say, a Landsat satellite, so on the scale of about 30 meter pixels, to do that with microwave at centimeter scale wavelengths, we would need an antenna that's in the region of a few kilometers long, and it is pretty infeasible to make an antenna a few kilometers long and put it into space. For this reason, we use a method called aperture synthesis, and that's where the name synthetic aperture radar comes from. The principle behind aperture synthesis is that we use lots of small antennas that are very poor at determining direction, but we use them together in a consistent way that allows us to simulate a larger antenna. So if we consider an antenna, say, from the ERS satellite or the Envisat satellite, approximately 10 metres long, but those radar antennas are actually composed of many smaller antennas, so small transmit and receive modules, that individually are very poor in terms of direction, but used together collectively in one large 10 meter antenna actually can, can work together to make this 10 meter long antenna. 10 meters long is not good enough to give us the kind of spatial resolution on the ground that we want to achieve in azimuth. We want to get something down to 30 metres or so, and a 10 metre antenna is probably going to give you something as a, a few kilometres across. So the way to do that is that not only do we have our 10 metre antenna that's made up of lots of tiny little antennas, but you might imagine making a kilometre long antenna by having 100 10 metre antennas. And we stick them end to end and we make an, a, a very large physical antenna. Now, because the physical antenna of a kilometre long would be impractical, what we can do is take that single 10 metre antenna and make a measurement and then move it on 10 metres and make a second measurement and then move it on again. And what we do is use the same 10 metre antenna, but we use it 100 times. And by storing and collecting and processing all the data that comes back together, we can then emulate an antenna which is as if it was ten, uh, one kilometre long, but using a 10 metre long antenna. This is the principle of aperture synthesis. We are synthesising a one kilometre long antenna with a 10 metre antenna, but using that 10 metre antenna multiple times over the kilometre. One way to think about how uh, a synthetic aperture radar works is to think of the principle of Doppler beam sharpening. The idea behind, behind Doppler beam sharpening is that you have a very wide beam, so it's very poor at determining direction, but you utilise some other feature of the echoes coming back to sharpen up the beam in order to get information from a narrower place in the beam. Now if you've got an antenna which has a very large a beam pattern on the ground, as it moves in, along in the azimuth direction, a target enters that beam, moving slightly towards you. As it goes through the middle of the beam, it's passing parallel to you, and as it leaves the beam, it is travelling slightly away from you. 
using the principle of the Doppler shift is that you can imagine measuring the frequency of the signals that come back from these targets. So as you send out multiple pulses and hear multiple echoes, those echoes come from a higher frequency end as they come into the beam through to the same frequency at which you sent it out. And then as it leaves the back of the beam, it gets stretched to longer frequencies. This is the principle of the Doppler shift. If we measure where the echoes are coming back and what frequency they're at, you might imagine that you can then determine which direction within the beam those echoes are coming from because they have a certain Doppler shift. It's this principle that's known as Doppler beam sharpening and it allows you to exploit the movement of either the platform or your target and in our case it's the platform that's moving and the targets come into the beam and out of the beam as a consequence of the motion of the instrument. But by exploiting that shift in the Doppler frequency is that you can determine within the beam which direction those echoes have come from. You then start off with a large beam but determine where the targets are coming from in a much narrower direction. And this is one way to think about how synthetic aperture radar can use a small antenna but derive very high spatial resolution in the azimuth direction.